All right, all right, all right. Hope everyone's having a wonderful Wednesday afternoon. Uh, my name is Akash, and I'm the Director of Growth Engineering over at RAMP. Um, today, I'll be sharing a little bit about our story as we migrated to Next.js. Um, just to set the stage here a little bit, the growth engineering team at RAMP is primarily responsible for driving top of funnel uh, customer acquisition. The website is the primary vehicle through which we do so. Um, additionally, you're probably wondering, what is RAMP? RAMP is a finance automation platform geared towards saving businesses time and money. Today, we serve 40,000 customers across the United States. Um, cool. So that's great. That's all put to the side. We'd love to now kind of chat a little bit about the context here. So Ramp emerged from Stealth in 2020. Um, and for the first year, we were heads down trying to achieve product market fit. Once we achieved that, we started to turn our attention to acquiring new business. And when you want to acquire new business, you need to have a strong marketing presence. At the time, we, we needed a CMS. We had only one engineer, myself, and then another soon after that was focused on the website. And so we opted for an out-of-the-box website builder platform. And that gave us a ton of leverage, especially early on. But as time went on and we wanted to do more complex things on the website, we started to run into constraints. And at that point, we started to reevaluate what else is out there. There must be a better way. So at the beginning of last year, we effectively took a step back, reevaluated our tech stack, and decided that it was time to migrate. Today, I'd like to share that story with you. Cool. So this is the agenda for today. I'm going to start by giving you a quick overview of why we decided to move to Next.js. We'll follow that up with a walkthrough of like what was our playbook. It's a pretty gargantuan task to undertake, so what were the steps? Next, we'll chat about what was the impact that we saw, followed by an anecdote about the Super Bowl ad that we did in February. Um, and then we'll talk a bit about what are we looking forward to in 2025 and beyond, and we'll wrap up with a conclusion. Awesome, cool. So actually what ended up happening at the beginning of last year is when we decided we wanted to move to Next.js, we had to put together a proposal for leadership because we we're basically advocating that we would slow down a little bit of velocity, put in all this time to invest in a new tech stack and start from, from zero, right? And so this is a distilled version of a multi-page document that my team and I put together when we made that recommendation to leadership. So the first thing that was most important to us when moving to a new platform was having more granular control over the user experience. So prior to this, we were on a web platform, as I mentioned, and we were limited to client-side development. So as you can imagine, there's like a ceiling in terms of how good your core web vitals can be because you don't get to control what's rendered on the, on the server versus the client. Um, and you're, you're pretty constrained. If you want to integrate with some sort of bespoke backend service, you can't really do that. You have to jump through a bunch of hoops, set up a proxy, et cetera. So that was huge. We wanted to basically have stronger core of vitals such that we could drive better conversion rates. So that was point number one of why we wanted to move to Next.js. The second big piece was having a better developer experience. So as a team starts to grow, you start to have more and more folks contributing. They're contributing in parallel. They're contributing across a variety of applications. And it becomes increasingly important that you have a robust test suite. You have the ability to share your work. So the QA deployment links are huge, because oftentimes we're collaborating with marketers. We need to shoot them something that they can quickly give us feedback on. Um, and then being able to like, invest in like, visual regression testing, doing all these things to just have a bulletproof release process, such that we're not inadvertently introducing errors in prod. So Next.js kind of had the ability for us to kind of build all of this, especially with the Vercel platform tied, tied to it. The last thing that was major key for us was having less of a ceiling on our applications. So the website kind of touches a bunch of peripheral areas. One of them is the CMS. So I mentioned before we had an out-of-the-box CMS studio. 
We couldn't really configure what the UI looked like. We had a bunch of marketers who wanted to contribute content. Their workflows all look very different. So it doesn't really make sense for like a sales rep and an SEO editor to see the exact same interface with all the different collections if only a few of those documents are relevant to them. So we wanted the ability to build something bespoke that allowed for their process to be much more efficient. And this was possible. Um, moving to a, a Next.js site. And then lastly, we wanted to supercharge A-B testing. Um, so when you're on a platform that's kind of out of the box, you're typically constrained by like, you know, these client-side scripts. They tend to only really offer like a couple different options when it comes to enrichment providers. And there's only a few traits that you can really play with. At the end of it, you kind of run out of hypotheses. Um, and so we wanted to utilize our internal customer data platform to power a lot of the testings so that we could be a lot more nuanced um, with, with testing. So these are the three, three main points that we outlined in our proposal um, and we eventually took forward um, for the migration. Great. Um, next, we'll chat about the game plan. So it's actually a full circle moment being here on stage today because it was about a year ago that my team and I were here at Vercel Ship uh, chatting with, with Lindsay, G, and Lee about Vercel and Next.js. And one of the biggest pieces of feedback, uh, or advice rather, that they gave us was to iterate towards that end state. Um, so this is exactly what we did. So we first started by looking at the entire sitemap. Where is all the traffic going? What are the pages that have the highest conversion rates? Which ones are used for paid ads? Which ones are the most important from a brand visibility perspective? And then we were able to narrow in scope, right? Start with something where we could get good enough sample size to know that this was working. Once we had identified where to start, it was time to start building. So we effectively ran like an A-B test. Um, so we had our old tech stack. We built a new version of that page in Next.js. And then we ran a 50-50 split. At the Cloudflare level, basically we're splitting traffic. And then we're using Core Web Vitals library to collect real user data to understand where, where were they tracking. Um, fortunately, it turned out being a net benefit. And uh, we just continued to crank away at it. And then the next step was to just continue to chip away at the sitemap and really start to invest in the developer workflow. Um, so this entailed you know, building out more rigorous testing um, and, and really starting to think more critically about where can we kind of take this forward next. Great. Um, so once the migration was complete, the impact started to like really start to show itself. So the first big thing that we ended up doing as part of this migration was building out a net new design system from scratch. So as I mentioned earlier, for like the first three years of the company, we were on this website builder platform where there was no real notion of a design system. And so one of the biggest blessings in disguise was that we had to really think through everything from first principles and start from a clean blank slate. Um, and so internally, uh, Kirby is kind of the mascot for our team. We call this Kirby uh, Design System. And effectively what we did is we partnered with the brand team to decide what are the components that need to exist at the atomic level, what needs to exist at the molecule level, and kind of build up to like the organism level. And so this has kind of allowed us to really reach alignment internally because now everyone speaks the same language. The designers who are in Figma, they're kind of using the same jargon that us developers are using. So that's been huge. It's really, it was a lot of upfront investment, but it's given us a lot of long-term dividends. The next thing that's been really interesting is the applications that we've been able to build on top of said design system. So one thing that I'll talk about here is our prototyper tool. Um, so this prototyper tool was born out of this pain point that we saw internally whereby marketers often need to build landing pages, but oftentimes they don't really know where to start. So typically the way things used to work in the past was there'd be a Google Doc, they'd kind of put it all in writing, and then they would take that to a designer, designer would translate those words into a Figma file, there'd be some back and forth, then it would kind of finally come, come along to the engineering team, we'd have some back and forth before we're even ready to build, and then there would be a whole, you know, continuous loop there of un unnecessary thrash. So what we did was we effectively exposed this design system in like a WYSIWYG type of interface so that a marketer can basically see what are all the pre-approved ingredients that one can put on a landing page, what are the guidelines that one ought to follow, 
For example, a paid ads page probably has a very different layout than a product landing page, and we're able to enforce this at the tool level. And so now people can effectively jump in there, go zero to 90 autonomously, and then for us as engineers, because it's backed by the components, it's like a one-click, fairly frictionless process to turn it into an actual page. So that's been huge for us. And then additionally, Sanity CMS, I mentioned earlier, we wanted to invest in a workflow that was much more tailored to the end user. And so with Sanity, we've been able to kind of do that, do exactly that, and build an experience that allows for them to like ship pages faster. The last thing that I'll touch on here is just the quality of life with First Cell. It's been head and shoulders above what we had in the past. The reporting is excellent. Being able to see speed insights in real time, the observability dashboard, and of course, the uptime. Cool. So the next thing I'll quickly touch on is our Super Bowl ad that we did in February with Saquon Barkley. This was yet another instance where we were able to show that the move to Next.js and Vercel was indeed the right move because we had this anomalous surge in traffic over the span of just a few minutes. And what was really cool was that we were able to do some load testing beforehand and verify that the site would indeed be able to handle that type of surge. So we used this tool called K6IO and we're able to test basically like a week's worth of traffic over a course of a few minutes. And, and like fortunately, the mock test ended up to hold true in production. And when the day rolled around for the Super Bowl, we had our laptops up, we had the observability dashboard there, and we were able to see you know, that spike and fortunately a 0% error rate. Um, and this, this entire exercise netted out to all-time highs in traffic for us. So sales qualified leads followed. Um, and again, like I said earlier, it was like a perfect example of like why moving your site to something like for a sell is indeed the move. Cool. So now that I've talked about that, what are we excited about? So now that we've migrated our site over, we've gotten some anecdotal evidence that it's, it's working, what do we want to do next? So the next 15 upgrade is something that we're very excited about internally. We want to spend some time working on that. Excited for the turbo pack uh, rollout for speeding up build times. As mentioned before, like builds can kind of get a little, uh, introduce a lot of friction if you can't really do them in parallel. So we're very excited to build up that process. Uh, partial pre-rendering, very excited about that to see how much further can we push the, the core of vitals. Um, and then next thing is continue building new apps. So I mentioned a little bit about Prototyper. So that's been huge for us for the landing page use case. But there's similarly additional use cases within the company where maybe sales reps need to generate documents or AMs need to generate slide decks. Um, so we're looking to extend further. Um, and then another thing I'll, I'll quickly, quickly mention is V0. So we've just started to like really iterate with V0 for conversion rate optimization. And in fact, the biggest power user at the company is not an engineer, he's a designer. And it's given us a ton of leverage because we've been able to introduce these moments of delight on the website that better communicate the value prop because you're able to interact with it as opposed to looking at some sort of static imagery or something that's a little bit more abstract. So we're very excited to continue pushing the edges in terms of what's possible with V0. Um, and then lastly, we're continuing to hire, continuing to look for smart people. We're hiring design engineers, front-end engineers, back-end engineers, that's my email over there. Please feel free to reach out if you're interested. Would love to look for top talent who's excited about growth. Great. Um, the last thing I'll say here is that I'm just one person here representing an entire team. This was the course of 12 months, massive team effort. So shout out to the engineering team. Uh, Daniel, Zayao, Barack, Tamba, Bryce, Carlton are excellent product managers. Cindy and Yash, design team, Michael, Shivani, Nicholas, Connie. Um, and then of course, our Vercel partners. They've been huge for us in terms of helping guide us through this process and help steer us towards what is like the next big unlock for us as a company. Um, so yeah, it really takes a team to make this thing happen um, and really appreciative of, of everyone involved here. Thank you, that's my time. <laughs>